Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I am going to get into a video, and um, basically I'm going to get into a video on questions you should ask yourself in getting the best Wi-Fi router that you can get for your home. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm focused more on home use than enterprise, but um, as far as this person goes, basically they sent me an email asking me if this is a good deal for this uh, given product and whatever, and... Uh, and uh, I figured I might as well make a video on not, not so much as far as the product, but how can you tell if, if uh, one Wi-Fi router is better for you than the other? The Wi-Fi router they're trying to get is the same one I currently have. Notes, I'm actually switching Wi-Fi routers to something that would be actually considered as to be a lesser in order to solve different problems. Um, so one I currently have is a Netgear Nighthawk R7000. It is the second best Wi-Fi router you can get for your home at this time in 2017. The best is the next upgrade in the Night, uh, Nighthawk. Uh, I think it's R8 or R9000. The only actual difference between the um, R7000, and which I got in the next one above, is an extra channel. That's it. I mean, there might be like one or two other things, but that's really it. There's no actual real difference besides the price. And because of that, it's, it's pretty much the best. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, and, and that's fairly important to note is... Uh, that actually might not be the best one for the person. Uh, the fact is, is you need to look at your limitations and stuff and figure out what is actually the best. And I'm not talking about um, having too much resources. I'm talking about will it even do the job that you need to do. So as far as that goes, uh, let's get into this. So basically, they currently are running their uh, router that they got from the ISP Internet Service Provider. And I want to mention something real quick. Normally, these routers are not the best or even close to being best. I'm not saying that they're bad or they're um, all not the best, but I don't trust ISP routers for the most part. Unless if I can get into the actual router itself, I don't trust it. And why is this important to note? Well, basically, there's been a lot of, of uh, people across the United States that's been messed over by their ISP uh, giving them a router and basically the uh, in order for the person the owner of the home the owner of the internet plant and and all that stuff they have to call up their ISP to say hey um, I need you to enable port forwarding or to do this to do that to do whatever because they actually can't get into the Wi-Fi router themselves. And that says a lot into it. How do you actually know that they're not spying on everything that you're going that's going through? How do you know? I mean, and, and th then there's scenarios where if you got like um, some ISP in, in some major city, once in a while this comes up, uh, there, there's been plenty of lawsuits that's favor the actual um regular person so many ISPs pr basically stop doing this but once in a while this comes up where the ISP gives the person a router they don't know you know not to trust it uh, they install it and whatever or uh, the ISP technician installs it for them and what went up happening is it creates a hot spot so what happens is someone passing by on the street they want to use the internet they say oh this hot spot so they end up paying the ISP to uh, use the internet. Sounds fine and all, but here's the facts. You're paying for the electricity, or, well, the person's paying for the electricity to uh, run that router, which has a hotspot going out from it. Plus, on top of that, they're paying for the um, internet, for the, uh, the actual internet going to the actual router in by the hotspot being used, that's sucking down the internet. Um, and, and the money that's going through that hotspot, the owner of that electricity going through and all the other stuff, 
they're not receiving a dime. That's going directly to the ISP. So you might see right there why the ISPs have lost almost, in fact, they lost every single one of those laws cases, the lawsuits, or it's been settled out of court, but it's basically stopped. You got crap like that that happens. I don't trust ISP routers because of that. You know, a few bad experiences spoils the entire pot, so to speak. Um, but with that being said, you know, sometimes it's not bad, but again, those few bad experiences, I don't trust them, especially with how cheap routers are. So um, as far as that goes, basically a person gets down to that uh, they don't have too many devices connected to it and uh, VPN there. They want to use VPN services and stuff of this nature. You need to note uh, what you want it to do, so like with VPN or, or whatever it may be. But I uh, have a list of questions that you just need to ask yourself, plus I'm going to add to that. So first things first is... Um, how many devices uh, are, that are Wi-Fi enabled will be using it at max? Um, so think of TVs, maybe a uh, fridge if, if you got the ability, a toaster, whatever. I mean, small items like that to cars, to computers, to so on. All, just think of all the devices that will be connected to it at um, it doesn't matter if it's a single point in time or just in general. Just think about that because because uh, it's possible that all of them could be connected to the internet at a single point in time. This is fairly important to note because um, I, I get into this in the past videos, so I'm not really going to get too deep into it. But basically, there's a um, device limitation. A lot of people don't know this, but all Wi-Fi routers, enterprise or not, has a device limitation. And some people might say, oh, that's in the thousands. Not the case. It's actually used usually in the tens. Um, and this is fairly important to notice because uh, you can actually solve this. It's called a device load. You can solve this device load problem by using what I'm about to get into is mesh networks. I'm, I'm specifically uh, going to get a uh, Google Wi-Fi to solve this particular problem. Um, and, and keep in mind that you can go to enterprise level or, or you know, like regular Google Wi-Fi, uh, which is the new home. And, and, and there's hopefully going to be more of these type of mesh network devices coming out because I think this is actually going to be more and more of a problem since we're in the Internet age right now. But, um, I mean, you got children's toys that are connected to Wi-Fi now, so you kind of need... To have that uh, fix as soon as soon as possible, but um, as far as things goes, the, um, the, the if you go to enterprise level, you need to know the restrictions. Uh, do you need to have a wireless control? Uh, can it just connect to your current Wi-Fi router and use that as a router? Um, the range and and so on and so on. Um, like for me, I was going to go to the um, enterprise level but everything is too expensive and when you get into the worthwhile price range it has like a 600 foot range and maybe okay I use two well I still got a device load problem and that's not solving it um, I don't have a range problem I got a device load problem which most people are going to run into and uh, that's not going to solve it at all in fact you're going to create a jamming effect or some other problem um, and and I, I might get into that into this video, but I definitely got into that in previous videos, so not that. So as far as that goes, let's go into the next one, and it's how big is the area that needs to be covered? This includes inside and outside. So if you're on a home, how much of the outside area do you want to be covered? Um, do, do you if if you own like say a five acre lot, well in the house is, you know, normal size house, well, do you want the full five acres to be covered? Or do you just want, uh, you know, the a small section, maybe 20, 30 feet outside the house be covered, which is more reasonable. Um, so note how much of area, and this includes apartments and some other areas. Because let's put it this way, if, um, like, say, say, for example, if I own, uh, I don't know, let's just throw 500 acres. If I owned 500 acres and I want, huge portions of it to be covered 
I'll go with the enterprise level and, and go through that. Because, again, those are meant for sports stadiums and stuff of this nature. So uh, that would cover pretty good amounts of those areas with minimum amount of devices. Where if I just want to cover small sections like a house, well, I don't need a enterprise level. In fact, getting an enterprise level can actually cause problems. Um, so note that. Note that there's an actual measure thing there. Then you got um, what type of materials do you have to deal with? This is fairly important. Um, say, for example, let's pull up paint real quick just for uh, kicks and giggles. But um, let's say that the Wi-Fi router is this. And then, I don't know, like the home is... Let's see if I can pull up the right color. So it's the home outside of it's made out of brick. Well, let's say that you got a weird shape and just the outside, this is a bit major thing, is say for example, you got a home that has some weird shape like that. Well, let's say that you have a device somewhere over here. Well, in order for it to connect to there, it has to go through one layer of brick, another layer of brick, and uh, possibly a corner, which is the thickest part being brick. In fact, basically two corners of brick. But, uh, you know, it has to go through quite a bit. So basically one, two, three layers of brick. Um, and a corner is going to be the thickest. So that tells you that it's going to have a very hard time. Or it won't even be able to reach it due to the brick. It's, it's uh, an insulator from the radio signals. And that's fairly important to note because a lot of people, they don't know about, that. They, they, they see, okay, Wi-Fi is a radio signal. That's all people know. But here's the thing is um, wi uh, radio signal is electricity. It's just basically uh, uh, electrical waves. Um, and, and you can go into science behind it, but basically where I got a space science background with rockets and NASA and whatever, the same thing that we're protect, uh, uh, whenever we go from planet to planet travel, the same thing that, that will be protecting the astronauts between planets or even from here to the moon if we go back to the moon anytime soon and, and uh, there's a lot of going back and forth. The same thing that will be protecting them is the same thing that will kill your Wi-Fi signal here on Earth or any other place. So basically, you got stone. Obviously, that's not going to go in space uh, or brick and stone. But then you got metal. That kills some of it. But a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know water kills it. So let's say for... Let's bring that back uh, wherever it is. Let's say that... Um, I don't know, somewhere in the wall over here, there is a bunch of uh, water pipes that goes up and down and, and you know, does water. Maybe you got a bathroom over in this area and you got some device over here. It has to go through that and water is one of the best ways to, um, to, to basically block stuff like uh, gamma radiation uh, and, and some other things. It's one of the best things that block signals. Um, and th that's fairly important to note. Yes, this is not going to fully block it, but basically it will dramatically drop the actual signal itself. Um, that's fairly important to note because uh, that that's a material that will block it, There's the water in the pipes. Then on top of that, the pipes itself, is it made out of metal or plastic? So what you need to really look at is what type of materials are in the in the wall and, and the walls are made out of. Uh, this includes the outside walls if, if you want the, the area to be covered uh, on the outside also. So this uh, things that you need to be looking at is a brick. Uh, so brick, stone, concrete is about the same. And, and uh, they're... they're you're going to find Wi-Fi has a horrible time going through. It can go through it, but the more layers, the more problem. About two layers, um, you're going to start seeing some major problems. Uh, but you still be able to get 
a pretty good amount. Once you get into the third, fourth, it, it, it's going to kill it um, almost in, all entirely in some cases or make it spotty depending on the wind. And that's also a very important thing to note, Sue. Um, just, just to add in here is, uh, let's see if I can pull up the thing is let's say that you're somewhere out here um and you're, you're doing your your stuff your your wi-fi stuff and you're trying to figure out this well um i don't know maybe you got an ip camera or something like that well this area let's say that there's a lot of wind that goes this area well what i'm happening is when it believe it or not can push around the radio signals um, and if it's already weak, like if it's strong, then there's not much it's going to do. But if it's already weak, your device might not even see it, depending on which way the wind's blowing and, and stuff like that. In fact, you can actually get it where it helps the signal, but it's, it's possible where it will block the signal altogether. Then you got things like if there's constant fog, that goes through so weather patterns uh, like like uh, v very humid in the air fog stuff of this nature uh, it's fog it has a lot of electricity that happens with it if you live in an area with uh, a lot of sand that goes in the air that creates a lot of electricity in fact you can actually see uh, sparks and stuff if you actually go into the desert and see sand blow you can see sparks go across it because that creates so much electricity that will uh, create EMI, which is electromagnetic interference. So that will basically jam or or um, help stop the uh, signal from going there. And and you can get other problems like that. So you need to know note that it's for the area, but also the type of Wi-Fi that you need. Um, so note that. So, but also again, uh, brick, concrete, stone, they're about the same. Wood, it, it 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 will slow it down. Like it will, um, it won't do much. Let's put it that way. If if all you got to worry about is wood, um, that's not too much to worry about at all. Uh, sheeprock, it's almost like nothing. So note that. So even though a lot of people consider it as stone who don't actually know much about sheeprock, they hear rock, so for stone, it's not. Uh, as far as this goes, don't. Don't worry about that. Uh, asbestos, it, it, um, same thing as sheep rock, um, even though, you know, whatever. Uh, then you got metal, which definitely is a killer. Water, which is a killer. Uh, pipes, if it's a plastic pipe, it, it's a less of a killer. If it's a metal pipe, it, it's a little bit more of a killer. Um, th things like that. It's stuff you got to watch out for. Then um, you got to look at the actual shape of the overall house, uh, the outside walls and stuff of this nature. So if you got uh, large areas, then um, then basically you're you're going to see easily that uh, there's less objects in the middle, so you're able to get signal across fairly easier. Whereas if um, if you got stuff in a way, then you know again the material it will keep the uh, radio signal from going to the right places. So uh, as far as uh, another thing is uh, certain objects like uh, metal bed frame. So in the house I'm at, there is a metal bed frame. Well, it acts like a Faraday cage. So let's try to pull up a uh, paint thing real quick so let's say with that uh, wi-fi thing let's say that there's a metal bed frame over here well what and and i got a i don't know a device over here that i want to connect to well basically it hits that and the metal bed frame acts like a faraday cage it's uh one of the canopy uh bed frames it's old old one antique and um since it's made out of iron basically it you know, I mean, okay, you can get some signal through, but holy crap, that will cut it down like nothing. Even though, like, I mean, the bed frame can be super close, and it will cut it down to almost like it's not getting it across. So that's fairly important to know. It's where um, it will cut it down massively. 
Um, so that's fairly important to note is, um, is if you got like metal, I don't know, counters or, or metal bed frames like that, or you got a pool table or table or something like that, that has, is made out of metal or, or similar type of material that can easily block it. It, it. it will block it from going to one side to the other or dramatically reduce it. Even though, you know, you're talking about posts that are maybe, you know, regular pipe posts and you got, I don't know, 10 feet or more space, it, still it will dramatically drop that signal. That's a huge thing to note. And um, I found that out the hard way. O overnight, in fact. So you got things like that, um, but those are the basic things that you need to look at. Is basically the materials and the obstacles and stuff of this nature. Um, and one of the other things that you need to look at that isn't on that list is what do you actually want the Wi-Fi device to do? So what I mean by this is, do you want it to be a VPN? Do you want some parental controls on it? Do you want, you know, things of this nature? What 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 bells and whistles do you want added onto it? And um, that's fairly important because if you, if you want like a parental control, um, you can actually some of them they have parental controls, most of them don't. So you have to look for that uh, and how important that is. So as far as that goes. Let's get into the actual uh, mesh versus knots. So again, with uh, stick away all this junk. So as we had in this demonstration, we have a Wi-Fi thing, and and again, you got a problem where okay, you get a, got a Wi-Fi device over here. Let's go through three layers of uh, brick, and um, and and order to get to that so it's going to dramatically drop to even make it where it's not going to see it at all and then you got other obstacles like pipes uh, uh water pipes uh, oh and uh thing thing i forgot to mention is uh with the materials is the wiring um the one thing i want to add in here real quick is there's something called electromagnetic interference and basically it's emi New wires won't cause as much EMI. There's always going to be some EMI, um, with the exception um, if, if you're going to get internet, if if it's through like um, fiber optics, there's no EMI. But if it's uh, through some coax line or something like that, there's a little bit of EMI that comes off of it. Now, the EMI, the range of it, uh, EMI is basically when you um, have wires or, or something else, and it, it causes a interference. Um, it, it's electromagnetic interference. It's basically normally caused by when you have a wire with not much insulation onto it or, or maybe a wire that's twisted in a way and uh, or or a wire that is kinked um and it, it has a little crack in the copper or something of this nature and basically it causes uh, almost like a radio signal that comes out of it um and what that can do is it causes a jamming effect it can start messing up with other wires and stuff of this nature but um, the reason why I bring this up is if you if you're in an old building, um, let's say pre two thousands, the further back it worse it's going to get. Um, if you got newer wiring, wiring, then you know just look at the date when the wiring was put in. If you don't know, then assume whatever you can. And basically, the older the wiring the worse the EMI is going to be because they didn't know about it. It really wasn't too much a problem. So what? You know, there was no internet, no wireless devices or anything like that. So it's like a so what type of situation. As long as it doesn't burn down the house, so what? Now we know, okay, you, you got this old wiring. It wasn't really um, 
protected as far as it didn't have the uh, protection in there to prevent from electromagnetic interference into the wire or out of the wire. This, this, uh, this is actually what causes some people to think that they got a ghost when they don't because of lights turn on and off or something of this nature. When you got modern day um, wireless technology, it will interfere with some of that old wiring and if it's connected to the lights and whatever, well, it starts powering up the lights very dim like, not enough to, you know, do whatever, just enough for you to actually see something and uh, that causes problems into itself. Uh, or you have its old wiring that, that interferes with each other. Stuff of this nature, um, like you got old wiring interfering with, like, with doorbells and, 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 and uh, porch lights and stuff of this nature. That's very common. In fact, it it's, uh, was a problem, more a problem back in the day, but was so much of a problem that people were getting fines because of some of this was actually um, creating interference with actual radio stations. And people report it, they triangulate it down, and, and that person gets like a $50,000 fine. So it, it's a serious thing. It's a very serious thing, but um, if if you got old wiring, that will interfere with the stuff. It's just something to note. Um, just add it into there because I know some people are in very old buildings and there's not much you can do about it because you're a landlord or or you don't have the money or whatever it may be to uh, fix the problem. So as far as that goes, oh. Um, yeah, so let's say that uh, this is a problem where, okay, a direct connection, you're going to see minimum. And um, you can see where there's potential problems or you got a device load or whatever it may be. So what you can do is you can, okay, you're going to have this connect to your modem and that's probably where that's the only choice. So what you can do is have mesh technology. So what you do, let's see if I can grab the right shape. You can have a access point there, access point here, an access point wherever. And basically what would end up happening is as long as these can see each other, so so how mesh works, uh, like Google Wi-Fi, I think Netgear Orb or something like that. And th there's like two or three others that are out for home use. Uh, hopefully more companies pick it up so people can actually utilize it. While you probably have like water pipes here or whatever it may be, say this one sees that fairly good. Um, and maybe this one, there's too much interference for it to really see that. So, but it sees this pretty good. Uh, so basically what would end up happening is um, as long as these can see each other in some form of fashion, they will communicate. Um, your phone, your laptop, your whatever, if it's switching from one device to the next, it, it won't notice a difference. And, um, and the good thing with this is, say for example, if we have one like, I don't know, right here, what happens is, let's say that, I don't know, um, this goes down over here. Well, what I'm happening is this still gets internet because it goes through that. So it's fairly important to note that it's self-healing up to a point. What you're going to get at home is probably going to be something like this. There's probably going to be no self-healing at all. Maybe, okay, yeah, this sees, sees it, but barely sees it. It will, um, you know, do whatever, and it will, it will um, you know, try to heal that way. But there's not going to be enough devices for it to be self-healing. So just note something like that. But let's say that you got a device out here and, and a few other places. Um, basically, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up having the uh, device load be spread out based on the access point, the location of the access points in the actual device itself. Keep in mind, uh, when I say access points and stuff like this, uh, this is actually what the uh, Wi-Fi devices are, is, is uh, the, what's sending and receiving signal. I might make another video on what is your Wi-Fi router in reality, because there's many devices in one. 
but the uh, Wi-Fi part of it is the access point. Um, and, and for the mesh network stuff, uh, is very specific on what devices will allow this. Uh, Google Wi-Fi is one. There's enterprise level ones, obviously. Google Wi-Fi for home use, Netgear Orbs. Uh, there's a few others, but uh, there's not too many right now. But instead of all of these devices going to that, uh, just try a different color. So instead of all these devices going to that, uh, what what end up happening is in reality, you um you end up having let's try this color. The devices go to the closest access points, depending on how they're programmed. And if you got something like in the middle, let's say that it has a choice between those two. Uh, it finds that, oh, this one is uh, it gets a better signal. It's going to go through that, and that's going to go through uh, the uh, mesh network to go to the Internet. Now, one thing you might be asking, will your overall um, network slow down even though it, uh, you know, you, you got uh, different access points? the overall network slow down to the slowest device on the network. The answer to this is kind of, it it's actually is true, um, let's just say true, but the answer is a little bit more complicated than that. So basically what happens here is, say for example, we have a access point and we have multiple devices. Um, so Say it's a MIMO, a MIMO, whatever, M-I-M-O, uh, say two. Well, what I'm happening is it can talk to two devices at, at once. Let's say that one device is very, very slow, and by the time it's done talking to uh, this device, it will move on and, um, and, and keep going down that list because it can talk to two devices at once. So as it's waiting on this one, it's, it's, it's just, oh, this one said, oh, I'm still there, let's move on. And uh, it keeps going down, and maybe by the time it's done with that list, it will, um, you know, that th this will get done, uh, depending on how many and how slow everything is. But um, the honest truth is expect it to slow down to the slowest device. Just just note that. So if you got, um, I don't know, some kid's toy or an IP camera or something like that that's fairly slow, well, what I'm happening is if it's, if it's fairly slow, uh, then, then just expect the entire system to slow down to the slowest device. But in all reality, it might not. So have a little bit of hope on that too so as far as that goes um just note that just note that and um let's say that you don't want to go this uh mesh network type of thing and, and the neat thing about this mesh network um i might get into a more deep video into it i, th I think i already did where um if like say for example the the uh, area that you need to extend to goes out a little bit more, you can actually go ahead and add more access points that works with the mesh network. And um, you can extend it out, so you can extend the range by out by quite a bit. Uh, note that each hop, so for example, where uh, it's going from here to here, by the time it gets out to this point, so so for example, this, uh, this one right here, uh, crap, this one right here, well, what is happening is this, the, the uh, internet that's coming out of it, is uh, the, the speed is half and the latency is doubled. Um, this tends not to be as bad as you might think, um, but the further out you get, the, the uh, worse it gets. Um, so, so, for example, if you're going from 100 megabytes 50 megabytes to uh, 25 megabytes, uh, so it can, it can you know significantly decrease. But it's important to note that that's a problem that some people do experience and do notice. Uh, but what the th the thing to note is how internet works nowadays. Maybe back in the day it would have been a little bit worse, but 
with how YouTube does its buffering and a few other places have evolved to um, – because you got to deal with places like in India and some other places where you got crap internet, brownouts, and stuff like that. Well, because of that, um, you, you still might be able to get, you know, 1080 or whatever, even four hops out. Um, so it's just something to note. Um, you know, I mean, if you're if you're streaming something or if you're playing games or something of this nature, that that's very intensive. Yeah, you might notice it, but it, okay. Instead of watching something in 4K, now you're just watching in 1080. It's not that dramatic, um, up to a point. Obviously, if you go too far out, that will cause problems, and um, that's just something to note. And if it's not set up right, then then it will cause problems. Uh, note that stuff like um, I don't know about the Netgear Orbs because I never play with it. And same thing with Google Wi-Fi. I never played with it, but I study it enough because I'm about to get it. And um, things like Google Wi-Fi and enterprise level and some of the stuff, they will actually tell you, oh, you're too close, too far, or whatever it may be. Some stuff you might have to figure it out on your own type, type of thing. You might want to note that. Um, so if, if something says, oh, you're too close, you might want to note that. But... You also need to know if if, if you uh, want to find the actual optimal place, you might want to take a look at the details. But if it's good enough, like a house like this, like um, a normal house, you know, good enough is good enough. But if you're in a business, you might need a little extra kick, like a park or something of this nature. Anyways, the biggest thing I want you to get out of this is that if you're problem is in range as far as distance you need to note that what type of router as far as the range that's needed if it's a device load problem then mesh might be a good good solution or maybe if it's uh, some other type of problem uh, then then something else will will solve it for example if you got um the bells and, and whistles, if you need a particular feature, then maybe a particular type will actually fix that. So as far as that goes, that's something to note into itself. But anyways, as far as that goes, I know it's been a little bit long video. If uh, you got any questions, anything else, then feel free to let me know and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. Leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.